it is real. I always watch TED Talks from YouTube, and I thought that these things are projections, but now I witness myself that <laughs> these things are real. I'm an information specialist. I study human behavior versus machine learning. But I'm not going to talk about that today. Before I became an information specialist, I used to be a linguist. Like many other linguists, I studied the words, and I compiled a list of my own favorite words in English language. My second favorite word in English language is the word but. Not the one with double T. <laughs> the reason I like this word is its transformative power. We can use the word but to bring lots of excuses to the change that may happen in our lives. Or we can use the same word to make the change that is going to eventually matter in our lives. Today, I stand here on this red circle with no significant scientific discovery to share with you. I have not published an article with lots of citations in a Springer journal with a high impact factor, nor am I planning to. The only thing I can speak about with full confidence is the change that I've been through in 31 years of my life. Like any of you, personal and professional, I've been these through, through changes and I've learned lessons. I want to share those lessons with you. I've learned that for a successful change to take place in your life, you have to go through three main stages. I'll show like Germans. I'll talk about that in a bit. Before I talk about that, a few of you may ask, what is a change anyway? My answer to that question would be, change is a journey. There are two important days in our lives. The day we are born into this gorgeous world with our splendid uniqueness. And the day we dumbly and blindly go under the ground to rot and disappear. Change is the only constant factor that happens between these two checkpoints all along the road, from day one to the last moments of our breath. And a few of you at the back may ask, why do we change? Why do we want to change anyway? My answer to that question would be, we change because we humans are curious creatures. Curiosity leads to evolution. Curiosity pushed for change. We walked out of the caves with curiosity. It is the curiosity that put us on the ship and made us sail across the oceans. It's the curiosity that elevated us to the skies and eventually the space. Curiosity is the essence of our existence and continuous change from day one to the last one. Our reason for being so curious is that we seek happiness. Change, to me, is another way of saying I want to be happier than I am now. I want to discover more. I want to explore more. I want to learn and know more. When we pursue change, we pursue happiness through change. Because, like Aristotle said, happiness is the goal, ultimate goal, of all of us. And we change because we are travelers in this journey. We travel physically beyond the borders, like Martin did, thinking that we can find whatever is going to make us happy. We travel mentally, pushing the limits of our brain, thinking that we'll be happy, seeking happiness. The journey we enjoy of change is more onto the mindset we travel with, 
rather than the destination we traveled to. Our mindset is set to seek change. It's set to seek happiness. You know what's the worst enemy of change? It's the worst enemy of change is settling down to routines and starting to use the word but. I want to finish my PhD, but my professor is a hassle. Resonates, professors take the message. <laughs> I want to quit smoking, but it's so hard. I want to lose weight, but I don't have time to go to the gym. I want to have my own business, but I may lose everything. What if we can change the perspective of the way we look at the things in our day-to-day -day lives? What if we change the perspective we use but and use its transformative power? I know my professor is a hassle, but I'm going to finish my PhD. I may lose everything, but I won't have my own business. I know it may take commitment, a lot of hard work, but I'm going to quit smoking. I have used this approach in my life for many times, and I've succeeded in many, in many times. And I've learned that for successful change to happen in our lives, we have to go through three main stages. Stage number one, inspiration. Inspiration is when you are triggered to make the change. Inspiration is the beginning of any transformative process. Inspiration can be as an external factor or an internal factor. As an external factor, inspiration could be a movie, a song, a speech, a book chapter, a success story, a TEDx talk, you name it. An internal factor for change and inspiration could be a desire to be happy and satisfied. As simple as that. You are inspired the moment you have decided to change. Because inspiration is going to push you out of your comfort zone. The second stage of change is motivation. You are inspired. Great. You have decided that I'm going to reach out and grab that goal, dream, or whatever it is. I'm going to make it happen. Motivation should be around to keep feeding you with the fire. Motivation is that poster you put on your fridge or on your board. Motivation is that quote you have saved to your desktop. Motivation is that motto you write it down every time you start your day. If I have decided to lose weight, motivation is going to the shoe store to buy the running shoes. Motivation is extremely important because it's the first of two make or break points. And then the third and the last stage of change is dedication. I'm inspired. I'm motivated. I have the running shoes. But what if I don't go running on a regular basis? What if I don't stick to my healthy eating routine? What if I light a cigarette because I got bored or I had an argument with my professor, even though I have decided to quit? Dedication is sticking with your plan to make the successful change happen. Dedication is the sum of determination, discipline, and mental strength. Dedication is, is going to be easy for you when you make it a habit. There you go. You have the three stages of successful change. Inspiration, motivation, and dedication. And then there is fear. I love fear because it doesn't have a fixed spot. Fear is present in all stages of change. We are afraid of unknown. Fear is the main point where many of us will make it or break it. Fear is the point where the mediocre ones, the average ones among us, will go back 
to their comfort zone. And the crazy ones among you, like Steve Jobs said, is going to defeat the fear and move on to change the world. That's what happens when you face fear. Change doesn't come easy. It takes courage to change. There you go. That's my most favorite word in English language. Courage. Because it takes courage to believe and it takes courage to change. And when we have courage to change, our change awakens our mind, pushes us out of our comfort zone, pushes us out of our routines, and re-engages us back with the life, with the moment, with the now. And let me tell you, it's worth trying. Because when you are trying, you can forgive yourself for not being the tallest, the richest, the thinnest, the one with the best hair, the one with the best skin. You can forgive yourself for not winning every time. You can forgive yourself for being afraid because we all are afraid. But never forgive yourself for not trying because only by trying will you be able to make the change that will matter in your life. And remember, your change is going to inspire others the way you can never imagine. It took me eight years to defeat the fear of public speaking, the fear of rejection, the fear of failure, the fear of imperfection. And I'm glad I decided to change things. Here it is. I'm enjoying this stage time now. I'm going to leave you with a question. When you walk through those doors today, ask yourself, what is the change you seek? And how much does it matter to you? Thank you.